Welcome back to Talk of the Town. Joining me now is one of our news partners, Vicki McCarthy from the Madison Community Montessori School. How are you today? Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Great to have you on again. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Montessori in the home. Right. So I know for you guys, you start doing um, schooling for kids 12 months and older, correct? Right. So if a family maybe wants to start implementing that Montessori philosophy really early on, what can they do in their own home to implement that? Right. Well, when a, when a baby first comes home, it's mm -hmm. a time of transition for everybody, for the baby, for the family. Even if it isn't the first baby, it's always a time of transition. So those first six weeks, six, eight weeks are really, really an important time Very crucial, for definitely. family to do bonding mm -hmm. and um, for the home environment really to be as calm and peaceful as possible. I know. I'm sure you want to do anything you can to smooth that transition right. and make it easy for the family, right. easy for the newborn. Easy for sleep, if that's at all possible. <laughs> Yes. That is the goal, right? That is, that is the, the hope. <laughs> so if you're setting up a nursery for your newborn or you know your baby you just brought home, what sort of things should a new parent keep in mind to bring into that nursery? You know, I think less is more. Mm -hmm. There are so many things out there available for babies, mm -hmm. and there are only so few yeah, things that important? are really needed. Yeah, what's What should be included? So you need a physical changing mm -hmm. area where you're going to be able to change the baby's diapers and the baby's mm -hmm. clothes, and everything should be in arm's reach because when the baby's that little, you don't want to oh, walk away from yeah. the baby. Not even for a second. Not even for a moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the first area you want to establish. And the second area would be a feeding area. So maybe a comfortable chair for mom and to do nursing or feeding in the baby's room um, with a step stool or something in a little table for her personal yeah, items nearby. something to make that very comfortable. Right, because there's a lot of time spent feeding a baby. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Definitely mm -hmm. a full-time job. Right. So second area you'd mentioned was for feeding. What's right. the third area? I bet there needs to be a place for the baby to sleep. Right. And so when a baby is very little, oftentimes families will use a bassinet mm -hmm. or a basket such as this for a baby to sleep in when, um, when they first come home from the hospital. And then oftentimes when a baby's maybe two or three months old and a little bit older for the basket, um, maybe a little bit too big for the basket, yeah. oftentimes families move into a crib. And if you're trying to do Montessori in a home environment, I would encourage you to try putting the mattress actually right on the floor oh, really? and not using the crib at all. Okay. Um, and that is just yeah, to really increase the baby's um, independence to allow so the baby to they're move. They're encouraging to kind of explore right. outside of the right. mattress and see right. what's going on in the room. Right. And I bet that's kind of to enhance their curiosity and help right. them build that. Right. To pique that interest and to really allow that baby the freedom of movement. Oh, absolutely. That's a really unique idea. I'd mm -hmm. never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Saves a little bit of money, too. Well, hey, right. there you go. Another <laughs> another perk of that, huh? So let's talk a little more. Is there is there a fourth area is. for the setting up a nursery? The fourth area, yes, is called a movement area. Mm -hmm. So you'll want to have, like, um, a foam mat on the floor or maybe just a thick blanket, something to protect the baby's head. And if you hang um, like a door mirror horizontally near that mat, then the baby can maybe spend some time awake um, on its tummy in sure. front of the mirror. And that mirror gives the baby a lot of feedback about its movements and the world around him. Oh. So it's a really great place to um, have the baby while it's awake. This is just one of my personal questions. At what age do babies start to kind of notice that that's them back in the mirror yeah, and know they've been getting that months. feedback. Yeah, okay. not for a few months. That's very fun. And, and I noticed you brought quite a few items with you today. So right. can you talk to us a little bit about those? Yes. So when a baby is really little, and I'm thinking around two or three months mm -hmm. of age, um, you're trying to develop it three different senses, the visual sense, the tactile sense, and the auditory sense. So when you use something like a mobile, so I'm going to just show one here. This is a mobile that we often use in a Montessori environment. And um, the idea is that it's really simple. Mm -hmm. There are only three or five Five elements hanging from a mobile that's sure. about all that the baby needs in terms of stimulation and you hang a mobile about 10 or 12 inches above the baby's chest not directly above the baby's face and that'll really help um, the baby learn to do some visual tracking you know and I think there there's so many out there that have a lot of bells and whistles mm -hmm. and just they can maybe almost be overwhelming to right. a baby but this right. looks like a really simple peaceful Right. toy to just kind of get them started and right. start having them engage with the world. Absolutely. So absolutely. I noticed you brought a couple other things. Are there right. any other toys you might recommend for a newborn? Yes, absolutely. So for tactile, um, this is a you know ball with protrusions. It's Certainly. very easy for the baby to hold on to this. Lots of places for them to grab. Mm -hmm. and, and as they get older, this is a great <laughs> gumming. Teething tool, yes, gumming te tool. Teething tool. Um, this is called the grasping beads. It's an easy one to make at home. These are just wooden beads on a leather strap. Again, lightweight, easy for the baby to hold on to. And these are very simple too, or maybe yeah. even something you could craft in your own home for right. your newborn. Absolutely. And lastly, just an auditory, um, some rattles. This is a, wood, a gourd. So it's just a dried gourd. Yeah. It's very simple, very lightweight. And then the silver rattle. I like that. You keep it very simple and right. 
easy and clean. Absolutely. I love it. Well, it was wonderful talking to you today. Thanks. We look forward to having you on next time. Stay tuned for more Talk of the Town. We'll be talking about a great program going on right here in our community.